What up, gang? It's Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, Ezekiel Milling, Villain, Villain, and Chill again. And last time, and we, fuck, what up, gang? It's Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, Ezekiel Milling, and Villain, Villain, Chill again. And we are back on Tsukihime. Last episode, Arukai burst into our room and started sucking our dick. And that shit was like low key hard as fuck. I'm not gonna lie. I was hard as fuck, not gonna lie. So. I have no fucking clue why that happened. Um, shit, I'm dead ass so fucking lost. I was so out of the blue. Shit was random as hell. But we're, I, I guess we're gonna find out why that shit happened. I don't know. Uh, what the fuck? Sixth day, October 26th, bow in the sky. Wait, whoosh. I get up forcefully from my bed. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> my breathing is out of control and my mind is still numb with the feel of Ar 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 Arukai. No, hold on, Shiki. Try to be calm. It can't hurt. First, this is my room. Check. That's good. Second, I'm on my bed. Check. Seems that way. And it's now morning. And I was fucking Arukai until now. Check. That's good. That's not good! No, never, not even slightly, not one bit. The sound of my panting fills the air. I manage to catch my breath. My hands gripping the sheets are drenched in sweat. There is a lingering warmth as if I was really fucking Arukai until just now. But it definitely was a dream. I can't tell if that's something I should be happy or disappointed about. I'd be disappointed as fuck. Arukai, bad as fuck. Why? Did I see such a dream? Does that mean I'm so interested in her that I see her in my dreams? Does that mean I want her so bad I do those things with her in my dream? Ugh. As I remember, the sensation of her skin forces itself into my brain. I feel my arms to make sure this is real. Yeah, it's real. Her skin was so fundamentally different from a guy's skin. So soft and warm. Yeah, so hot I wanted to go wild. Just thinking about it makes my breath go wild. Well, whatever happened, it's true that it felt exceedingly good. I should feel a bit guilty. I feel a bit guilty dreaming about doing that to Arukai, but I recall the dream and just sit there thinking about it. Oh shit, Shiki Sama. Whoa, shit! I flailed around off my bed like trying to escape. No, in fact, I was trying to escape, but it just ended with me landing on the floor with the sheets. He sweet. How how long have you been there? Since before you awoke, Shiki. She speaks with the usual lack of expression. Still lying on the floor, tangled up in the sheets and unable to stand. I look up at Hisui's face. Before I woke up, then that means Hisui saw my face when I was having that dream. My face turns deep red. Hisui just stands there, expressionless as usual. It makes no attempt to speak. Um, did I look strange? I do not wish to describe it. Fuck. 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 Shit. Fuck. Ah, uh, I knew it. I must have looked really weird. <laughs> but if you insist, I can describe it as accurately as I can. No, please don't do that. My face still flushed, I speak in a fading voice. Hisui? I give a cough to clear the silence. Adding, a. Uh, San to her name is a clear sign of my vulnerability. What is it, Shiki? Um, I'm going to change, so would you mind waiting outside? Or rather, I'm so embarrassed, I just want her to get the fuck out of my room. <laughs> but Hisui doesn't obey today of all days. Fucking hell. Once I can confirm you are awake, I will leave the room, Shiki. You whore. Huh? I I is she joking? Why does she think I'm... Why, why does she think I'm covering myself up in these sheets? Nigga, my balls is out! It's the high something that's still standing! I I'm fine, so please leave. I can get up and I won't go back to sleep. I'll change and go to the sitting room as you as soon as you leave. Cheeky, are you hurt and unable to stand? No! He still approaches me out of worry. No, that's not it. I'm standing. I mean, I, I can't stand. I Two things have standing. No, stop! So don't worry about it. I crawl, pulling my sheets like a slug and gain some distance from her. Using the bed as a barrier, I get far enough away. Then please excuse me. I will prepare your breakfast, so please, 
come after you change. <laughs> she has got to be suspicious. But she bows and leaves the room. Thank God. <sighs> I was so surprised. The contents of my dream were surprising enough. But knowing he so he saw me while I was dreaming is very troubling. It's all Arakai's fault for doing something like that. Why did you have to come into my dreams and suck my cock? Even now she's being bothersome, really. Really? Really what? I can't finish. I already did. What did I want to say just now? Not even able to confirm my own feelings, I decide to change and head to the sitting room with a vague feeling in my chest. After calming down sufficiently, I head to the sitting room. As usual, Akira is sitting on the sofa, elegantly sipping tea. Good morning, Nissan. You were certainly up early this morning. She must be happy I woke up because she greets me with a smile. Yeah, good morning. There were, well, a lot of things going on this morning. As soon as I say that, I suddenly recall the memory of Arukai's fat ass on, on my cock. <laughs> the memory of Arukai's skin. Uh, uh, this isn't good. I can tell my face is blushing beyond my control. Nissan. A brief clamor. What's wrong? Your face is red. Do you have a fever? N no. Rushing over to me, she looks me up, looks up at me from below. But in doing so, from this angle, uh, Akia sighs. You do seem to have a fever. Kohaku, come quickly. Nissan doesn't seem to be well. Akia calls out to the dining room. Kohaku has been, has been preparing my breakfast in the kitchen. I'm fine. It's just a, a minor cold, so don't worry. If it's a cold, then I can't let it go by. For you, a trivial illness is a big deal, weak ass bitch. The strength of your immune system is much lower than most people's, weak ass bitch. Akira seems to be fed up and puts her hand on my forehead. The sensation of a cool, delicate hand. This isn't good, this isn't good at all. So I break loose and run out of the lobby. My little sister is making me horny. <laughs> what the fuck? Hold on, shaky, bro. Lock in. Your little sister should not be making you, getting you hot and bothered, bro. <laughs> Footsteps echo as I dash off. Why are you in my room? She's sniffing my sheets and shit. Shiki-sama, have you finished your breakfast already? No, that's not it. Uh, where's my bag? I have your bag here. Are you already going to school? Y yeah. I'm going. Don't, don't, don't worry about seeing me off. Nissan, you've been acting strange. What are you doing with a fever like that? Fucker! I told you it's nothing. Since it's nothing, I'm gonna go to school. And I'll have breakfast later, so leave me alone. Leave you alone? Hey, Nissan! The sound of my fleeing footsteps is my only response. Ah. <sighs> Even if it is Akiha, she wouldn't chase me this far. Cause we're not kids anymore, she won't stop me from going to school. Woo! I take a deep breath, deep breath, and I'm finally able to calm down. What am I running away for? It's just a boner. What? <laughs> Nigga. Alright, Zeke. Stop. Alright? Read the dialogue, and stop being extra, and goofy, and fucking stupid. Once I calm down, I can think clearly. I didn't do anything wrong, so there was no need for me to run away like that. I don't believe it. I look like a complete idiot. But to go back to the mansion and eat breakfast sounds more dumb. To school then? Letting out a sigh, I go downhill along the residential street. I arrive 30 minutes earlier than usual. The, the figures of students around the school gate are sparse. It seems I'm the only one who arrived at this odd time. On the school grounds, the athletic clubs are holding their practices. I'm not in any clubs right now, but truthfully, I like to move around a lot. I know that I have some athletic ability, at least enough to be proud of. But I can't join any clubs. My body always has this reoccurring anemia, so I would just be a bother. And my doctor has told me that I should not exercise frequently. Since middle school, I've been asked more than a few times to join a club. But I always have to say, like, oh, that's not my thing, and refuse. Every time I refused, I felt a sense of separation. That might have been a subconscious wall that told me I'll never be able to mix in with the people on the other side. Ah, oh, that's enough. This really isn't my thing. I'll stop thinking such thoughts and hurry on to the classroom. The fuck? 
thought I was the first one, but it seems like some of my classmates are already in. Yo, you're early, Tona. Morning. The class seems to have a lot of people with spare time. Nah, our practice just got over with. Those that come here this early aren't in any clubs and usually only those with daily duties. I see. That does make sense now that he mentions it. Greeting those around me, I take my seat. It's half an hour before homeroom. Not a bad idea to just watch my classmates arrive. The classroom starts to get busy around 7.50. The fuck? I think I saw Senpai in the hallway. She's down at the first year hallway again? What is she doing? Maybe she came to see me. Hold on. Then... Hold on, let me... Let your boy save, let your boy save. You finna scare this, huh? An opening, I'll surprise her from behind! Senpai's glancing all around the hallway. I don't know if she's looking for something or someone, but she looks really suspicious. I get this sudden, irresistible urge. Senpai's always taking everything at her own pace. I think I can respond sometimes to balance things out. Senpai's seriously searching for something. I sneak up behind her. Luckily, Senpai doesn't sense me at all. Here goes. Boom, nigga! I grab her from behind, but... Oh shit, hold on. <laughs> My fault, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Before I know it, I'm lying on the ground. Shit, she looks scary as fuck. Oh my goodness. Oh, Tono. Senpai sounds worried. Yeah, it's me, Senpai. Jeez, don't surprise me like that. I reflexively got away, but are you all right? Huh? I'm, I'm fine. I just tripped. Reflexively got away the fuck? This bitch Spider-Man? This bitch got spider sense? She got that spider tingle? <laughs> I stand up. I guess the strange looks from all the other students in the hallway are to be expected. Ah, fuck! Shit! Man, I think I hit my hip. Guess I shouldn't have pulled pranks like that. Regret. Exactly. I think I overdid it, but since it was your fault, I won't apologize. Ah, oh, fuck you, I know. Sorry, I interrupted your search. Well, this mischievous boy will now go back to his classroom. Rubbing my ass, I start to head to class. I want to rub her ass. No, stop, Zeke. Oh, wait, Tono. Can you stand there as punishment? No, what? No. What do you want? What do you want? What are you going to do to me? Stand here as punishment. As usual, she says some dumb shit. Sure, what is it? Just don't move, please. Like yesterday, she starts sniffing. Why the fuck are you smelling me, you fucking weird doggy bitch? Senpai. Tono, did you sleep well last night? Huh? She looks directly into my eyes and she, as she asks. Sleep well? That goes without saying. I couldn't get to sleep easily last night and also... Uh... I blush as the memories resurface. The memories of Arukai bouncing on my cock. With a piercing gaze, Senpai looks up at me. Senpai, uh... Tono, you pervert- YO! <laughs> she read our mind! Huh? With the look indicating she wants to say more, Senpai quickly walks away. At lunch break, the guy who didn't even show up for a single class arrives. Yo, Tono! Food, let's get some food! He's happy about something, being even more energetic than usual. Of course, food. But you seem to be in a great mood. Did something good happen, Naruhiku? Yeah. I just asked Senpai if she wanted to eat lunch together and she refused. That's odd. Senpai must be referring to Seal Senpai, but this guy seems to get happy when his offer is refused. Is he a masochist? Hey, Naruhiku, you have that sort of taste? <laughs> no, no, I'm not finished. So I asked Senpai why not, and she said, if Tono's there, then I don't want to come. <laughs> she doesn't like you, nigga. <laughs> Isn't that great, Tono? That's odd. Why have I been friends with this guy since middle school? Oh man, she really hates you, Tono. Arrival's loss is my gain, so I'll treat you to lunch today. Arihiko happily slaps my back. 
Well, I'm happy you're treating me, but Senpai was angry at me? Huh? Well, left that she asked, will Tono be with us? I, I nodded and her face turned all red. As soon as she heard your name, her face probably burned with anger. Probably. Isn't that a little different, Arihiko? Maybe. Maybe not. This dumbass. Arihiko's story can't be trusted. Certainly, Senpai did seem angry this morning. But I don't know why she would be. No way. She couldn't have realized what kind of dream I had. If she could figure that out from one conversation, she'd make a great detective. Hey, stop whining and let's go, Tono. There's only enough there's only seats enough for the half for half the niggas for half the people using the cafeteria. Ah, no, I Arahiko, hang yourself. I'm going to see Senpai. I'll pass. I'm gonna go buy some bread and eat by myself, fuck nigga. Really? Then I'll go ahead. Our ego goes off to the cafeteria. Well then, I also get out of my chair, head over to the tea club room where Senpai may be. Where she may be be. I stand before the tea ceremony room. Of course, I bought some food for myself before I came. Knock, knock. I tap on the door. I hear some scuffling inside and sense a person on the other side. Yes, who is it? I can hear Senpai's voice through the door. It's me. Senpai, would you like to eat lunch with me? There's no answer. Senpai, I said lunch. I'm not eating with you, Tono. That voice doesn't sound happy at all. I'm not sure what to do. I have some curry bread. I pull out my secret weapon. Tono, do you think I can just be bought with food? Senpai shouts from the other side. Maybe this is, maybe this less than 100 yen bread didn't work. Shit. I think trying to barge in would make her more angry, so I guess I should just go back. And then... Well, I guess I'll have some, though. I guess you can't be bought with bread. Fuck! <laughs> she opens the door and stands in front of me. See, Senpai? S senpai. Come think of it. I shouldn't be taking this out on you, Tono. Turning away a guest that came here would be a little rude. With her red face, she mumbles something like an excuse. Senpai, does that mean we can eat lunch together? I don't mind if you take it that way. If you like this room that much, then please come in. Senpai goes into the tea ceremony room. Following behind her, I walk inside. I start to eat with Senpai. Even though I get the, got the impression she was in a bad mood from Arihiko and her reaction back then, it suddenly doesn't seem that way. Senpai, I heard this from Arihiko, but you're angry with me? How come? No, I'm not really angry with you. It's more of an indirect thing. Maybe it's your... It's, it's more your ins ins insensitivity. Wait a sec. You're normally a hard person to understand. But today you're even more so. If you're angry at my ins insensitivity, that's fine. But what do you mean, maybe? Senpai, you don't understand how you feel? She sighs. I'm a little unsure. I'm not usually concerned with myself. Senpai almost sounds apologetic. Probably I don't like myself. Sen uh, hold on. How do you not like yourself? I like you. Senpai sits in silence without looking at me. After a short moment of silence, she suddenly glares at me. More importantly, Tono. Yes. Straightening up, I look back into her eyes. Since I know she's about to begin a very serious conversation. What is it, Senpai? Could I have that curry bread? What was with that all of a sudden? Didn't you just say you won't be bought out by food? That's a different matter. Tono, are you trying to take back what you said earlier? Senpai is really angry. It was just a joke for me, but I guess she took it very seriously. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Please accept this, your highness. I hand over the curry bread. Giving that up, I only had some sausage bread left. Yay! Senpai happily... Yay! 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 What the fuck? Senpai happily takes it from me. Is she a kid or something? Then I will give you some of this hamburger. Here you go. Senpai says that she gives me half of it from her lunch. I think the difference in the barter exchange rate was a little high. I love this picture. After we finish our meals, we pass a time sipping tea. A perfectly tranquil passing of time. 
It seems like she's not conscious of my presence, and I'm not especially conscious of her presence either. Just a calmness, just a calmness. Like two friends of the same gender, we pass the remaining time like this. Hey Tano. Yeah. What is it, senpai? I've been thinking about this for a while, but your glasses aren't used to correct your vision, right? Wow, you're amazing, senpai bullseye. That's just for show. I knew it. Hey, Tano, could I ask a favor? Senpai looks expectantly in my eyes. Not so much my eyes, but my glasses. Just once, could you take off those glasses? Fuck no. That would be troubling. Taking these glasses off means I would see those lines, and more importantly, I don't want to see the death of this person so close to me. I can't do that. Unfortunately, I've never taken these off in front of others. It's kind of like a vow, so I'll reject your request. I answer clearly. Senpai slumps disappointedly. Huh, if you say so, then I guess it's not possible. Yeah, it's because these, yeah, cause these past eight years, I never, never took them off in front of other people, but... That's right, that ended. With these eyes, I saw the death of many, many things. Tana? Ah, uh, yeah, what is it, senpai? What do you mean, what is it? Suddenly spacing out like that? Lunch break is almost over, you know? Oh, that's true. I thought we had about 10 more minutes. Yes, we did have 10 minutes. But you were spaced out for that long. Senpai gathers up the cups. Huh, was it really 10 minutes? While I'm still tilting my head in curiosity, I help Senpai tidy up the tea ceremony room and then leave. Glasses end again with plenty of time to spare. Well, go on to the city, see what's out there. I don't feel like returning to the mansion directly, so I'll wander around the city for a bit. That was such an immediate decision though. <laughs> I didn't even really think about what the right choice would be. I just said the city. I mean, I guess cause we haven't really been out there yet, huh? I mean, last time we was out there, we fucking murdered somebody, but we haven't really, we haven't really been out there. I arrive in front of the station for no apparent reason. Ever since I was invited back to live in the Tono mansion, I've been low on money. So I don't really want to spend any money here. When I lived at the Aramus, Keiko would always give me some money for cleaning or attending the garden. Now that I'm at the mansion, I don't think I can hope for that kind of income. I'd like, a, I'd like to do a part-time job, but Akiho would never allow it. Reflecting on my complicated situation, I let out a sigh. Not doing anything, I watch the people passing by. I pass a time like that for an hour until I realize how pointless it is. What the heck am I doing? I don't know for sure myself. Was I thinking that I would see someone with golden hair walking by if I watched all these people? How fucking stupid. You'll never see Arakite again, Shiki. I stop leaning on the wall and head back to the mansion. And then I see Arakite. <laughs> I walk up to the road and back to the mansion. It's not quite six o'clock yet. It's still an hour until dinner, so I'll kill some time in my room. Huh? What happened? Wait, what just happened? That was, that was extremely unnatural. What the fuck just happened? That shit's, that's scaring me. That's actually kind of scaring me. I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of scaring me. Dinner is over and it is now nighttime. A rare event. Akiha, Kohaku, and Hisui are all in a sitting room. So I joined them for some after meal tea. Is that so? I like the second one rather than the first one. I think the taste is more refined. It is a difficult choice. The difference in taste is great, but everyone handles the different concentrations in varied ways. But Kohaku, you like Japanese tea better, right? I think Hisui prefers English tea. Hisui doesn't mind, does not, Hisui does not, does not mind blends that much. She may look sensitive, but Hisui is, Nesan. Sensitive like she looks. See, there isn't anything she can't do like cleaning it or sewing, Shiki. Gohaku suddenly engages me in conversation. Hisui's glance seems somewhat scary too. Why are you suddenly telling me that, Gohaku? 
because Hisu is your servant. You surely know about her sensitive sensitiveness, right? Well, I quickly look over at Hisui. Hisui stands there quietly with something like an air of attack around her. No, I don't think she's that sensitive. She takes care of things quickly even when I mess something up. She don't get angry like someone else when I come home late. Nissan, don't you know it is perfectly natural for someone who breaks curfew to be scolded? I'll beat the shit out of you. I know, but it isn't, isn't 8 o'clock a bit too early. I'm not a little kid, so let's make it like 10 o'clock from now on. I'm a grown ass nigga with grown nigga shit. Come on now. I got bitches bouncing on my dick, bro. How am I supposed to get pussy if I gotta come home at 8? Fuck out of here. Fuck curfew. I refuse. You don't have any reason to stay up that late anyway. It's not like you have a cram school or club to attend. <laughs> Bitch. I can't really rebuke her when she brings that up. Rebut. Fuck. Someone free like me coming home late means I'm out playing around. Shaky, it's as Akia says. It's dangerous out there recently, so please don't come out at don't go out at night, okay? Dangerous? You mean no serial killers? Yes. That almost makes me laugh. The one doing that, blah, 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 is no more. But the only one who knows that are me and Arakai and other people. Me, Arakai, and other people are still frightened about the shadows of the dead killer. This morning they found another victim in the shopping district, huh? That's the 11th victim, you know, the 11th victim. Wow, 11th? That's amazing, that's a baseball team. Wait a minute. Goaku! Yes. What you just said, is that true? Yes, it's true. It was in this morning's news. It seems like it happened last night, but just like all the others, all the blood was drained completely. What? That's weird. Because Nazza is dead. How can someone who died two days ago kill someone the day after? No way. Did he not die? No, that's definitely not it. He definitely died. I killed his bitch ass. So how come? Arokai, no! Don't tell me you're the killer! Then maybe if the vampire roaming the streets disappeared, but these incidents are still happening, then the only vampire left in this city is her. Good night, Shiki. Yeah, good night, Hisui. The door shut softly and I'm left in his room alone. Another victim appeared. Another victim killed by a vampire. It can't be Arukai, right? She says she doesn't suck blood. More than that, I don't think anyone who acts that human could do that. I only spent two days with her, but I can't believe she would do anything bad. With her prettiness, her great smiling face, she can't suck someone's blood and discard them on the street. But, but there's been another body, dead body found. I should meet. I should just meet her once more and ask her about it. Saying that aloud, I quickly act on it. I take the knife I used to fight and sneak quietly out of the mansion. Going out into the street, I start to search for Arukai. My lungs feel like they're gonna burst. I stop running and catch my breath. My body, which was running nonstop until now, wheezes to try and suck in more oxygen. My panting fills the air. This is no good. I can't find her. I ran down the street into her place, but I still couldn't find her. Damn it, that Arukai. She's always around when you don't need her, but when you try to find her ass. I speak those words selfishly. It's been four out. Damn. It's almost midnight, but I still don't see Arukai anywhere. For some reason. For some reason, I thought optimistically that I'd find her easily once I started looking for her. I want to see her. And when we last parted, she said, see you later. Shit, where did you go, Arukai? For some reason, I'm getting very annoyed. I keep thinking I'll see her soon, but I don't. This is killing me. I thought we'd see each other again. What is that? It's like, I'm in love with her. Hold on. But that? No, that's, that's, that's fucking stupid. Uh, <laughs> he said that. Forcing a grim smile, I shake that. What? Wait, what was that picture? I didn't see that. I didn't get to see it. Forcing a grim smile, I shake that thought from my mind. I'll check out the park, and if I don't see her there, I'll go back. Taking a lotus juice deep breath, I walked to the park. Two nights ago, 
That park where so much happened. The park where I parted with Arakai. Huh. Fuck. There's something different about the park. The lampposts are off. The lampposts about the park are all turned off. The moonlit park seems more solitary than usual. Is it a power outage? I look around me. Outside the park, the lights are all working. The only lamps not working are within the park itself. Clang! Oh, what the fuck is that? I hear something. The clamor sounds like it's coming from a fight. I'm curious. There's no basis for this, but this late at night, there's any sort of trouble going on, I think it has to involve her. Alright. Trying as hard as I can to be silent, I head towards the source of the sound. I can see two figures facing off. Someone's wearing dark black garments and I can't tell who it is. But I can easily tell the other one. White garments and golden hair that can be easily spotted, even in just the moonlight. Arukai! Arukai is being attacked by this black human shape. That black human shadow is carrying something like a sword. And it isn't something like a simple fight. Sword in hand, it jumps towards Arukai. Arukai deflects the blade coming in toward her chest with her hand and lightly contacts the chest of that black shape. In the next instant, the sword wielding shape flies through the air like a soccer ball. Thump, roll, roll, roll. Falling down the brick pathway in the park, it keeps rolling as if easing the fall. No, to be more accurate, it rolls right toward me. Oh shit, it's dark and I can't tell, but in front of me the shape stops rolling and regains its feet. A sharp cut off voice. Ah. Fascinated by this display, I let out a breath of admiration. Suddenly, the sword-carrying figure ceases all movement. I'm seen. The figure finally seems to realize I'm here. And then it leaps toward me, sword- No, stop that! The cutting blade of the sword rapidly arcs towards my throat. The speed, this flying speed, this accuracy surpasses that of Nether the Beasts. The shadow's movement is as fast as Arukai's when she was tearing apart Nether's beasts. The sword pokes lightly at my neck. Thump. My heart accelerates to a feverish pitch. I don't even have time to think of the danger to evade. My thoughts are filled only with death. The sword doesn't pierce my throat but stops suddenly. Tono. Senpai? Zexiu! Though that was her! Our voices overlap. Both our voices are drowned in disbelief. Shield Senpai and I stare at each other with an amazed shock. Shiki, get away from her! Arokai's voice calls out from far away. Arokai dashes towards us. Senpai glares at me with eyes that seem to belong to another person. Like that, she turns around and runs off. W why? Senpai's completely gone. That black figure, Senpai wearing those dark clothes. That person who saved me two days ago when I was nearly killed by Nazvir's crows. But Senpai said that wasn't her, so why? Shiki! I suddenly realize Arokai's here. Ar Arokai. Are you alright? Did she do anything to you? Just like Senpai before, she looks at me intensely. That doesn't matter. Did she do anything to me? I touched my neck that had a sword on it until now. It's a light, sharp pain. The finger that touched my neck is faintly painted red. Senpai's sword has cut my throat only a few millimeters deep. What is going on? Why would Senpai attack me? Why, really? Why would she glare at me like that? Isn't it obvious? You saw us trying to kill each other. She's someone who co operates a complete secrecy, so she hates for an ordinary person like you to see what was happening. Arakai says that unbelievable statement. Kill each other? Why? How come... Why would you and Senpai do something like that? Lost in pure shock, I can only manage those words. In the first place, I didn't come here to ask that. I wanted to ask her, Arakai, about something, which is why I was out here in the first place. I don't know. I don't only came here to see you, so why... Why are you and Senpai trying to kill each other? Huh? Shiki, you came to see me? Yeah. Something I wanted to talk about, so I was looking for you. So why did it end up this way? 
I don't I don't know. My head is just spinning. Please, could you tell me what was going on? Well, I was just simply fighting that person from the church. It isn't something that concerns you, so just forget about it, Shiki. It does concern me. But first, what do you mean the church? Explain it so I can understand. Araka doesn't answer. She mulls it over until she nods. Sure, why not? Since you're that worried, I'll tell you. It really doesn't concern you, though. Do you really want to hear it? Yeah. No matter what it is, I won't mind. Oh, how enthusiastic. I'm actually a little curious about why you came to see me, though. Come on, hurry the fuck up. Damn. I want to hear about that person. Arakai looks a little angry. I don't even think about why she would look like that all of a sudden. My throat still hurts. Senpai. Seal Senpai pointed a sword at me. All I can think about is why she would do that. Fine, then I'll tell you. The dead apostles are vampires who try the utmost to conceal their existence. In order to live, they must suck the blood of humans, so victims will always appear as long as they exist. But, there, but there's not too many stories of people being killed by vampires, right? Do you know why that is? Arakai, I didn't ask about vampires. Jeez, I'm trying to explain it to you in order, Shiki, so please answer. Look, even when vampires kill people, they try to hide it from the surrounding society that people like you live in. They seek to hide themselves and try as much as possible using magic and other things that camouflage their victims to make it appear natural. Do you know why? Well, it's because humans aren't stupid. If they find out monsters like that exist where they live, they'd attack them. Even though humans are weak, they do have things like police. If there is such thing as vampires, an effort would be made to protect people from them. Then people would stop walking around at night like what's going on right now. I think they would try to hide themselves because that's, in in because that's inconvenient for them. Well, I guess that's true. But police are only a law enforcing group against humans. We don't consider them at all. But it's correct to say that vampires hide their presence for the sake of self-preservation. Shaky, there is a natural enemy of the vampires. A group of something like professional killers that now have the power to balance in their favor. It's true for other transcendent species, but especially for vampires, it is fatal for them to reveal themselves. Even if a vampire made a secret kingdom in a village somewhere in the mountains or from all civilization, this natural enemy would definitely notice if victims keep increasing. Vampires exploit the humans in secret, so there's no, so there's no reason other than self-preservation. The vampires hide their dead victims' bodies, not out of fear of human society finding out, but in fear of these natural enemies discovering them. Their natural enemy? She means someone that fights against vampires. Like Senpai who was wielding a sword against Arukai. So they aren't human either? What are you saying? Their natural enemy was, is without a doubt you humans. Natural enemies, us. Yeah. Starting from a long time ago, humans used many kinds of magic, the occult, magical ceremonies to create, to create an organization and started to eliminate primates other than the humans. The greatest of these is Christianity, the pride of the Vatican, the exorcists. The Catholic Church has always viewed non-humans as impurities, but vampires are considered the most dangerous. There are many religious groups in the world, but the Catholic Church looks at vampires with more hostility than the rest. You know, it's almost an obsession. They're so insane, I don't even want to mess with them. Araka lets out a sigh. You should know what I'm getting at by now. The one who tried to kill you was a member of an elite organization that hunts heretics. This group, the Burial Agency, is part of the church. They use their own strength rather than law to deal with contradictions to Christianity. These hidden exorcists are more like professional killers. Being the ones who crush contradictions, their existence is a shadow, so they don't come out in front of people. They're the section that should not exist within the organization called Christianity, so they kill all of those that discover their existence indiscriminately. That does not sound very Christ-like, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> that woman, it seems she's now called Shield, probably came here to hunt down the vampire in the city. Her sense for the enemy is far better than mine. She says this in an irritated manner. I don't have any words to say. 
Senpai is some sort of exorcist who's hunting vampires. I just can't believe that at all. Because Senpai is such a gentle, good nature. She can't kill. She's not someone who can handle things, such things like, unlike me. That's a lie. That's a lie, Arakai. Because Senpai is an upperclassman of my school. So wh wh why would you say she's a member of the church? Hey now, Chicky, you know her? Arakai draws near as if telling me she won't allow that. Of course. She's a third year in my school. I've known her since I was in. I've known her since I was a first year. Since I was a first year. Uh huh. Something's wrong. Come to think of it, how long have I known her? I don't even know which class she's in. I try to remember, but I don't have any memories of her before that day when I found her mending those splints. Thank you very much, Tana. Because she smiled as she said it. For some reason, I felt like I had always known her. This this can't be true. First of all, the strangest thing is that Senpai was called Shiel, like it was natural to be called so. But no one calls her with a different name. She was only called Shiel. How come no one doubted such a name? Arukad, about Senp about that person, who is she? Didn't I tell you? She's a member of the burial agency. She's a newcomer who only entered eight years ago. But maybe she has, but maybe she has great abilities. She's an agent already having a seat in a perfect number of the seventh. In the perfect number, the seventh. I don't quite get what the hell she's talking about. But the number seventh is certainly a perfect number. A number isolated from the others. In its solitude, it has nowhere to go. Isolation, isolation. Since it is perfect, the Apocrypha named with the number refuses reincarnation. I don't quite get it, but for some reason those words repeat in my head. That's right. The members of the burial agency are highly skilled, so I guess it's easy for them to su use suggestion against someone who can't even resist. That woman was probably was deceiving you, was deceiving you all in order to stay in your high school. Suggestion, like hypnosis? Yeah, it can be a very complex order. She probably used something like, don't doubt shield. Yeah, that's it. I always felt like something was wrong from the beginning, but as soon as I would see her again, those doubts would disappear. Feeling it was natural for her to be there. Wasn't that one of shield, one of that, one of Senpai's characteristics? I understand, but there's still something else. You said she's a member of the burial agency, so why is she fighting you? They only fight bad vampires, right? So there isn't any need for the two of you to fight, right? They only fight bad vampires. Such as those who suck the blood of humans and cast their bodies away. Arakad, you... Huh? What, did I do something? Arakad looks directly at me. I can't think it. I don't want to think that this person would ever suck human blood. But the truth is, the incident is still occurring. Furthermore, Senpai, an ex from the church, is trying to kill Arakai. Arakai. Don't tell me the killing yesterday was your doing. That's why you and Senpai were fighting? I grit my teeth. I speak those heavy, painful words as if confessing love toward a girl I like. Shaky, are you serious? Even I don't want to believe it. But then, who did it? Nesper is dead already. So that leaves only you, right? I'm filled with regret as soon as I say those words. I still like her. She saved my life and those two days were still a lot of fun. So I don't want to separate with her like this. But if she is a killer vampire, I... And then smack. My head is hit with a fist. <laughs> Shaky, you fucking dumbass. Argyne? I wouldn't normally let it be subtle with just this, but since you look so pitiful, I'll let that be enough. Smiling, Arakai hops back. Shiki, you're a great person. What? Having her say that makes my cheeks flush. And in addition, you're so honest. I like those things about you. Arakai smiles happily. Seeing her like that, I can't imagine her sucking on somebody's blood. Arakai, so... Yes. I'm not the killer. It's the work of some other vampire and not me. 
The knot in my chest disappears. Thank God. I see. I knew it. Arakai didn't do those things. I see. It was the work of another vampire. That's a relief. Wait, that's weird. Hold on, Arakai. You said it's another vampire. But isn't it odd for vampires to come out one after another? What are you saying? There aren't any new vampires. What? Well, but but Nazbear isn't alive anymore. There isn't anyone else that could do something like that. Oh, I see. Shaky, you really made a big mistake. Arokai gives an amazed sigh. You see, the serial killings you were talking about were always the work of just... The serial killings you're talking about were always the work of just one vampire from the very beginning. So no new vampires were, will appear, as Nazir was unrelated to those incidents. Huh? He was unrelated? What do you mean? Just like I said. You're normally pretty sharp, but you're stupid at some time at some points. Think back, Shaky. Nazvar is a vampire, but did he ever suck human blood? Suck blood? He ate hu Oh shit. I see. Why didn't I notice such a simple mistake? The victims of the serial killings are found with their bodies drained of blood. But he was different. He didn't leave any dead bodies behind. He not only drank the blood, but also ate the meat, leaving no trace. To prove it, the people eaten by him in the hotel were treated as missing people, not killed people. So that means it is something completely different. Wait, then what is the serial killings going on right now? Just who's doing it? Oh, that's a different vampire than Nazvir. To be more specific, that vampire is why I came here, and Nazvir came here following me. It's that sort of correlation. So the one you're after wasn't him at all. Yes, I didn't ever say that he was my initial target. I was his target, but he was never my target. My target is the one called the serial killer in this city. Uh, I gasp in shock. But it really is just as she says. She said her purpose was to kill vampires, so I just thought it was him who she was after. So what is it? Killing Nazbert that night was pointless? It wasn't pointless, you fought at my place. Well, if you didn't kill me, then you probably wouldn't have had to do it in the first place. I feel a little dizzy. In other words, those vampire killings had nothing to do with him and was the work of another vampire. Yeah, that's right. But that's my problem, so you don't have to worry about it. But more than that, hey. With an extremely happy smile, Arokai looks up at me as I stand there in surprise. How was last night? Who came? Huh? What does she mean by last night? I don't understand what she's talking about. After all, I'm the idiot who mistook Arokai's words and made such a stupid mistake. So of course I don't understand what she said. Sent. Huh? Did Arokai ask me about ask me who came last night? Nigga, I came all over the Arokai. What do you mean by last night? Huh? That's strange. I know I sent you a dream familiar. Wait. What's that dream familiar thing? Um, it's like a familiar that lets you see a dream about what you desire the most. You're a male, so I sent you a succubus. Wasn't it a good dream? I... A good dream. That was... I remember the realistic dream I had and my face turns red. You... That was your doing! Arlokai grins even more. Crap. If I stayed quiet, this conversation would have been over, but since I reacted so strongly... Ah, so you did get it. What kind of dream was it? The dream familiar was supposed to take the shape of your greatest desire, so it felt really good, right? What kind of dream? That's... Arakai looks up at me, full of amusement. Uh... She's acting like the Arakai from last night's dream. It doesn't concern you, so leave me alone. I look away from her and refuse. But Arakai keeps saying, come on, come on, over and over. Come on, tell me. You can at least tell me who you dreamed about. She asks like a curious kid. Every time I turn away, she keeps jumping in front of me saying, come on, come on. This is pure torture. She's as mischievous as last night's dream. I bear my face in my hands. Hey, Shaky, don't be quiet and tell me. Arakai keeps looking up at me with those upturned eyes. I can't, God, please. This is my limit. You. I hesitatingly let it out in a quiet voice. 
Huh? What about me? Don't make me say it again. I'm saying that it was you who came. Fuck! It was you! Damn! I shout angrily as I look away. Arakai's eyes widen in surprise. M me? Yeah. Hey, shit, call me Rock Kim, because this shit ain't no joke. You came and, and then I came in your mouth. Fuck! There's no way I can finish. I already did. Ah. Uh, now Arakai looks away from me, looking very uncomfortable. Nigga, this is your fault! <laughs> Neither of us know what to say. The uncomfortable silence continues. <clears throat> I can't bear the silence any longer and force out that cough. Ah, the lampposts are turning back on. The previously dark lampposts spring back to life. The park lit only by the moonlight gradually becomes brighter. It seems that woman lifted her barrier. It was supposed to prevent anyone from entering the park, but it seems like you could pass right through. Huh? You mean that power outage was Senpai's doing? Yeah, it's one of their specialties, letting people stay away. It really has nothing to do with us. By the way, Shiki, I want to ask, but what do you think of Shio? With a cold voice, Arakai suddenly asked that. About Senpai? Why do you ask about that? Oh, nothing. I just hate that woman. We were supposed to meet and exchange information, but I got irritated during the conversation when he ended up trying to kill each other. Kill- Why? In the first place, Senpai isn't a vampire. Why did you try to kill her? That's my line. She was the one who struck first. Huh? The one who struck first was Senpai. That's right. She said, I knew it was pointless. I just can't allow your existence. And then she attacked me. She may look very calm, but all the members of the burial agency enjoy fighting. You can't let her fool you too, Shiki. What? Enjoy fighting? Does Senpai really... Hey, you remember... Oh, never mind. Shiki. You were fooled by her up to now, right? So why are you saying things to help her out? You know she was tricking you, since you didn't know anything and pretended to be a normal person. Don't you feel a, a little angry about being used? Arakai glares at me. That is, I'm certainly shocked. That is, certainly I'm shocked that Senpai is different from normal people, kind of like Arakai. But I don't feel like I've been tricked. On the contrary, Senpai's helped me so many times. I, even though I know about Senpai's identity now, I still think of her as Senpai. Eating lunch with her, talking about dumb shit with her and Arihiko, walking into the school gate, all of it was so much fun. So if I could, it would be better if I didn't find out about her. Shiki, whose side are you on? Mine or that woman's? I feel pressure. Her eyes are the source. Now she isn't like a human, but more like a hunting, like an animal hunting its prey. It seems Shio Senpai is an unforgivable enemy for Arakai. That's why she glares at me with such fierce, hostile eyes. As if saying, if I'm her enemy's friend, then I'll be Arakai's enemy as well. Arakai. I have trouble answering. I... Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm going with Arukai. Real shit, though. Like, look, I'm sorry, but I'm going with Arukai, man. Some people may disagree. I'm going with Arukai. I'm just saying, bro. Let me compare this shit. Let me compare this shit right quick. Arukai gave me head. Shield Senpai did not give me head. Alright? Arukai saved my life. Shield Senpai... Well, shit. She, she saved my life. But Arukai saved my life once. And then she was scrapping with me the second time. And we done been through some shit. Shield Senpai, she popped through, healed me, dipped out, and then tried to gaslight me. But look, the important shit is this. Arukai sucked my dick. Senpai didn't. So like, I gotta go with Arukai. How do I feel? Nigga, like a million bucks. Senpai is dear to me. No matter who she is, the time we spend at school together is precious to me. But even still, to me, Senpai is Senpai. Friend or foe, man or woman, before all of that. I only feel that she's my dependable senpai. Come on. You can't fool me by being quiet, you know? Arakai continues glaring at me. Come to think of it, no matter what kind of person senpai is, this person is much, much scarier. I've been forgetting, but she is a vampire. 
and she seems to lack knowledge of moral concepts. But I am still attracted to her. Even tonight, I was simply looking for her, but I was getting so frustrated when I couldn't find her. It was something like feeling worried about a loved one. Shiki, I'll ask you one more time. Whose side are you on, mine or that woman's? Arakai glares at me in irritation. Hey now, isn't that already decided? I'm still here. If I was on Senpai's side, I would have gone after her. Um, in other words, what do you mean? Arakai tilts her head like a dumbass and asks questioningly, what do I mean? Why didn't she just understand simple conversation? She's stupid. It's like, if she's like this, unless I don't say, unless I don't just say it directly, she'll never understand. You're pretty fucking dense, dumb bitch. Saying I'm still here means that, means what? The fact that I'm attracted to her is the undeniable, undoubtable truth. But I know that it's something I must not say. No matter how beautiful she is, it doesn't change the fact that she's a vampire. You're going silent again. What are you trying to say? If you want to choose shield, then just say so. I, I said that's not it. I keep saying it, but why don't you understand? Fuck. How can I know? Being screamed at irrationally, she screams back at me irrationally. Fine. Then I don't know you at all, Shiki. Hey, hold on, hold on. Where are you going? It has nothing to do with you. Don't follow me. Is she really that angry? Araka walks away without even turning around. What? I stand in shock by myself in the park. Arakai got mad and went somewhere by herself. And I asked her what I and I asked her what I wanted. And I asked her what I wanted, so I know I should go. And I asked her. Oh shit! I asked her what I wanted, so I know I should go back to the mansion. But my feet don't move even one step back. My logic tells me where I should go, but my heart doesn't listen. It's been said a million times, but the feelings of love and hate, they have nothing to do with logic. And I ain't talking Bobby Tarantino. I don't want to be alive! Man, jeez. Damn it. Why is it that I just can't leave Arakai alone? Arakai! I said wait! Raising my voice, I chase after Arakai to keep on walking. Surrounded by night, Arakai walks down the street. She looks straight ahead, her white figure and golden hair fluttering. It bears a horrible resemblance to the first time I saw her. No, or perhaps, perhaps it's like that time she faced off with Nasvi. For some reason, I have a bad feeling about this. Hey, Arakai! Arakai continues to walk without turning around. I want to talk to you. You can at least tell me what you're going to do. Of course, Arakai just continues walking without turning around. It'd be miserable if I left it like this. I decide to follow her silently for now. The footsteps echo through the night air, and then Arakai suddenly stops and turns around. Don't follow me. Don't you understand it's troubling for a normal person like you to follow me around? So tell me what you're going to do and I'll go back. It doesn't concern you, so leave me alone. Arakai strides off once more, being childish. Crap. It seems like our world is wandering is going to continue. When we approach the main street, Arakai freezes. Found it. Huh? Her voice is cold, like a totally different person's. Ah. Uh, a chill runs down my spine. Even from behind, I can feel the hostility manifesting itself in her. Arakai, what? What are you? I can't even finish. It's clear what she intends to do without saying anything. Beyond a doubt, there is nothing but pure, unadulterated intent to kill. Hey, what are you thinking? Arakai doesn't answer. Her eyes are fixed solely on a man in a business suit walking by. Shiki, take off your glasses and look at that person. That person? You mean the businessman? Hurry! If you want to know what I'm doing, then leave the questions for later. Alright. I don't like to look while in town, but... I take off my glasses. Ah, oh, shit! Instantly, a light headache springs forth. In exchange for the pain, I can see lines running all along the walls and the ground. Another question, Shiki. You only see the points on living things, right? Huh? Yeah, that seems to be true. Things like buildings only have lines. I saw them back during my time at the hotel, but at the cost of a headache that almost caused me to pass out. Right. Since you're a living being, you can't comprehend the depth of inanimate objects. 
So in order to see the depth of inanimate objects, we must first connect the circuit of the same orientation as them. To see, you have to comprehend them first. Then another question. Shiki, how does that person look to you? It'll just be the same- What the fuck?! Without thinking, I'll take a step backwards. What is that? Certainly, all humans have lines on them. But they only have countable amounts, like, like, like geometric patterns. But what the fuck is that? There are lines running all through him. Those lines are all over like blood vessels. So much I can't even make out its appearance. I want to puke. Those black lines, they're red actually. Scribbles making a human shape. Everywhere throughout it, I can see black points that look like they're flowing blood. Shiki, how does it look? I was hoping it would look normal to you. I don't answer. Right now, it takes all my strength just not to vomit. I see. How unfortunate that you can see, see that you can even see the death on that thing. Yeah, it's not normal, but I can still see the lines. I knew it. You can even kill the dead. The fact that they don't have any life has no meaning for you. Something that moves, something that breaks. You can stop it completely without exception. You're more than a monster, Shiki. Huh? As you saw, you can't call that thing human anymore. It's a vampire that deceives death by sucking the blood of other people. Arakai quickens her steps. She walks straight towards the man. Hey Arakai, stay there, Shiki. Did that young man realize Arakai was there? He starts running towards a back alley. Arakai strides silently. Underneath the moonlight, she disappears into that alley. Thump. The sound of my heartbeat is awfully close. It's not even real late at night. Even though I'm in the midst of a bustling shopping district, I can't sense anyone besides myself. Thump! My glasses, I have to put on my glasses. If I don't do that, I'll see terrible things. I'll see something so terrible that everything I've seen so far will be nothing in comparison to it. Dump! But my body won't move. My, my, uh, my eyes, I can see this patchwork world looks the worst at alley in fascination. Suddenly, sounds vanish. In the presence of other people, the sound of the wind, the smell of the dirt, all of it freezes. Under the frozen moon, the bizarre noise sounds on the other side of the wall. Go. No way I can see it. I can't hear anything. A sickening sound. But I can see it. My eyes definitely see the sound of death and death crashing. My vision turns crimson. Why do my eyes see death? Something that shouldn't be able to be seen. My glasses. I have to put on my glasses or I'll go insane. I hold back the rising gorge in my throat and use my shaking hand to put on my glasses. Sound and light return. Now that I'm calm, I glance around and see nothing out of the ordinary in the shopping district. The bustling of many people passing by. The brightness of a store's decorated show, when decorated show window and the sound of rushing car engines. I'm panting excessively. I can hardly breathe. Even though I put my glasses back on, I can still feel a lingering remnant of that death and it makes me sick. Arakai comes out of the alley. There isn't even a trace of her previous hostility, and she seems to be in a good mood. Arakai. Huh? Oh, I see. I guess you really did stay here. Stay here? You... I can't go home after seeing something like that. Huh? What's wrong, Shiki? You don't look very lively. Don't worry about it. It's just my anemia. More importantly, Arakai, what was that all about? I look at Arakai as I grab her arms. What? Shiki, what are you doing all of a sudden? If you're hurt, I can take you to your house. No, thanks. I'm fine. So tell me, what that what, what was that person? You showed me this much, so if you say it has nothing to do with me, I'll punch the shit out of you. I approach her, ignoring the fact I can barely breathe. Aokai's expression instantly turns serious, but I have no intention of backing down. After a brief stare-off, she gives a sigh. Fine, you're awfully persistent, Shiki. Well, forgive me for being persistent, bitch. Idiot, that was a compliment. Then shall we go somewhere else to talk? Somewhere else? Why? 
You want me to tell you about it, right? So not here. Let's go back to the park. Shake it. Can you walk? Oh, don't make fun of me. This anemia is an everyday thing. It ain't shit. Aww. Arakai says regretfully as she, as she smiles and starts to walk. I walk behind her and resist the urge to pass out. You had the opportunity to have a bad bitch carry you in your carry you in her arms, and you over here being a prideful masculine man. I would have turned female immediately. I would have said, "Nah, my legs don't fucking work." I would have fell. I would have fake fainted and been like, "Shit, my legs, my, my my legs. I can't even move my legs for real. Please carry me, hold me in your arms, bad bitch." Well, as you wish, Shiki. Let's talk about anything. If you want to ask something, feel free. Then I'll ask. But just what, well, just, just what was that guy earlier? You said he was a vampire, but was he the one you were after? No, he was certainly part of my target. But putting the dead back into the grave isn't my goal. I only got it because he was a minion of my enemy. If I left him alone, he would kill more people to increase his power. Arakai, uh, could you explain it in a way that a dumbass like me can understand? I don't even know if that guy was even human or not. Oh, I guess I never did explain to you in detail about vampires. Nazvir is sort of an aberration amongst the vampire race, so I didn't really need to explain it at that time. What is a normal vampire then? What I mean is what you all think of vampires. Immortal, never aging, sucking human blood, turning that human into a vampire, being destroyed by sunlight, all of that. My enemy is that old type of vampire. So you mean his enemy of yours is the one behind all the recent serial killings? I suppose. But the killings of all those people by sucking their blood might be the work of the dead, like the one you saw earlier. Shiki, you remember how Nazir was made by, was made of all those familiars, right? Yeah, not exactly something I can easily forget. The dead are like that. When humans have their blood sucked by a vampire, they can also receive some of the vampire's blood. They die but remain in the world as a servant of the vampire. They're called the dead and they are like the vampire's familiars. Ah, uh, but maybe it's easier to understand if I use the word zombie. It's closer to, a, to the voodoo belief in Heishi, where the white serpent god Dumbala is invoked to control a dead body. But let's just say that the dead body that moves is a zombie, okay? Yeah, I can visualize it better that way. I get it. So that man was killed by a vampire who uses him as a zombie. He think he... Richtofen. What was that one bitch name? That, the little girl that used to that control the zombies until Richtofen took over control? I forgot her name. Yes, yes. Arakai nods happily. I'm still confused though. Why would a vampire even do that? Killing people, not letting them die, but controlling them? What bad taste. You're right, those vampires do have bad taste. But that's something only dead apostles do. Those... Those that were always vampires from the beginning don't do such things. Always vampires from the beginning? I remember. You said there's two types of vampires. Those who were vampires originally and those who were humans. Heard that before, it kind of kind of stuck in my head. Thought it was a little odd. What exactly do you mean by those who weren't originally vampires? Simple. I'm just saying that dead apostles used to be humans. They either gained immortality through magic or became servants of the true ancestors that sucked their blood. Shaky, you said it was bad taste to use killed humans, but that's just the least of it. There are other vampires who think up worse games. A game? What is that? You guys kill for fun and use their bodies as toys? I won't deny that. For vampires, amusement is the same as breathing. For those who were once human, but gained imperfect immortality, their greatest enemy is boredom. They didn't have a reason to become immortal to start with, so once they gained immortality, they lost all kinds of greed. Their goal was immortality itself, so I guess that's just the way things are. They're bored, so they want to play. Don't be ridiculous. Isn't it enough that they won't age or die? Do they really need anything else? That's what I said, they got everything they wanted. After that, there's no meaning to existence. As soon as someone realizes they have no value, that their value is stopped, then their meaning of existence disappears too. Immortality is also another word for death. 
So they started to wear down and started to create their own amusement as if to tell themselves that they could have fun as long as they lived. That's their beginning. They copy humans and see themselves in a game as lords of a castle expanding their territory. I guess you can call it a country of the dead. It seems they got more enjoyment out of that than they expected. She speaks as if she was talking of other people. Arakai should be one of those, but she certainly doesn't seem like she has that sort of hobby. Well, we'll change the topic, but the dead apostles were originally human. There are a few cases where they became vampires with their own magical research, but the majority of them were humans who had their blood sucked. They were immortal, but they can't last forever. They can only be immortal if they drink the blood of others. Didn't I say their immortality was imperfect? If they can't feed on humans, then their vitality is gone. But if they only fed on humans, then their existence of vampires would be revealed. Even if they don't, just by being there, they distort the world around them. That world would attract the attention of agents of the church like S.H.I.E.L.D. So you mean that vampires can't do what they want? Yes, if they break their agreement with the church and move about freely, they would be immediately discovered and annihilated. So the majority of the dead apostles make subordinates that can bring them blood as they sleep. Sucking blood and giving the dead body some blood of their own, they create their minions who do their work for them. We simply call those the dead. So what you killed before was like a soldier for the dead apostles. Not so much a soldier, but as a puppet. Not so much a soldier as a puppet. The dead apostles control the dead bodies by skipping the process of becoming a vampire. The dead are completely connected to their parent vampire. In order for them to survive, they attack others and eat their flesh but more than half of the energy goes to their master. Like a queen bee nourished by the worker bees, the dead apostles can use the dead to create their power while they sleep. My enemy can't be found easily because he's using a lot of the dead. He only dirties his hands once. After that, he simply controls the dead while he sleeps to expand his territory. They say many bodies are found in the recent supposed serial killings, but those are actually just failures. To tell the truth, there are only over a hundred victims in this city, but only a small amount, the ones discovered, are the victims of the news. What? Over a hundred? There are that many that had their blood sucked? And all those people sucked the blood of others to make them into monsters like themselves, like that wandering lifeless thing earlier. That's ridiculous. Three days ago. I remember how all those people in the hotel were killed for no reason. I was there, but I didn't see it, so I can only visualize and can't really tell what kind of violence it was. It's still the same. I can't fathom the existence of vampires that suck human blood just to increase their own territory. Just without reason, without recognition. If someone close to me died like that, how would I act? I don't want to imagine it, but for a brief instant, I imagine Akiha being drained of blood and discarded like trash. What makes me mad is that this worst case scenario could happen at any minute in this town. I didn't even have a clue about it before. I knew you would be angry, Shiki. I didn't want to talk about it because for the prey, for you guys, this is an inexcusable evil. This is not something you want to hear, is it? That's right. After hearing this, I don't know what to do now. That's right. No way I can live in peace like I did until now, knowing that someone I know may become a victim tomorrow. Since I found out about it, I have to fight this vampire just like I did with Nasvir. Duh. Such a fight. Do I have to fight again like I like do I have to fight again like that when it almost made me go insane? Oh Shiki, you're making that face again. You can relax. Even though the avowed enemies of the vampires do not have a presence in this country, I'm still here. Didn't I say earlier my purpose was to execute vampires? I don't know where that heavy atmosphere I don't know where that heavy atmosphere went because Arakai instantly becomes cheerful. Yeah, I remember. But you're a vampire too, right? Why you side with us humans? I'm not really siding with you humans, but I'm doing it because I don't have anything else to do. She doesn't have anything else to do. I still don't understand her. Well, doing that does bring the dead apostles after me, but you beat Nazvi who was pursuing me, didn't you, Shiki? So now I can go back to the original planet to defeat my enemy. 
You can go back to living your normal life now. You don't have to worry. You don't have to associate with me anymore. She smiles as if she's happy about something. Shiki? Why are you making that troubled face again? Because I'm troubled. This something that involves the city I live in. I said you shouldn't worry. In two or three days, it'll all be over, so there won't be any more victims. Yeah, honestly, I don't want to be involved. But saying that line, shouldn't I, the one who's actually living in this city, say the line instead of Arakai? Arakai, can I ask you a question? This enemy you speak of, is he strong? Well, he should be many times superior to the dead earlier. I haven't met him this time, but he's been Latin for eight years, so maybe he's a class five by now? Class five? I don't get it, but does that mean he's stronger than Nazvi? Not a chance. Nazvi was special. He was a pure supreme vampire that would be difficult to defeat even with my full power. Compared to him, this enemy is pretty weak. Oh. Then there's no way you'll be defeated. I breathe out in relief. Huh? Who knows? A few days earlier, he wouldn't have been a problem, but now I'm just recovering. The possibility that he has more power is actually high. Recovering? Are you sick or something, Arakai? Yeah, I'm still recovering from the effects from when you killed me. And I don't think I'll be fine for at least a few more days. Ah. Uh, that's right. I, I did fucking murder her. The reason why Arakai is weak is no one's fault but mine. But it's okay. I'll defeat him for sure, even if it kills me, so you don't need to worry about this city. Dumbass, the one I'm worried about is you. Huh? Eh? Why are you worried about me, Shiki? Her eyes display true confusion. Well, of course I'm worried. I was relieved to hear that this enemy was weaker than Nazvir, but because I thought there would be no chance of Arakai being defeated. Arakai. I don't even want to imagine Arakai getting hurt. It really is weird. Why can't I not just leave her alone? Certainly, I have the responsibility to bear for killing her. I also feel guilty that she's weak right now because of that. But even if that wasn't the case, I still couldn't leave her alone. I thought about it before too, but as expected, this might have nothing to do with logic. More than the fear that I may even die, the emotion that I want to help Arakai is much stronger. About what we talked about before, Arakai. About what? You know, about whether I was senpais or your ally. Wait, please, hear me out. You know, um... You certainly don't have any common sense. You're selfish, you're fucking stupid, and you're a little hard to handle. Uh, Arakai looks at me with a sour expression. <laughs> She's like, alright nigga, get to the point. Ignoring it, I let my true feelings out. But... Well, it's not boring when I'm with you. I like you. So, I can see it out until you defeat this enemy. But what I mean to say is I, I won't be Senpai's ally, but yours. I steal a glance at Arakai's face. Really? Looking very surprised, she hesitantly returns my gaze. Well, yeah. Even I think there's something wrong with me, but I'm already part of this. And I can't just overlook the problems going on in the city I live in. So you mean, yeah, if you're still weak and if you say you need my power, I'll work with you. I may just be a burden, but yeah, if you help me, there's nothing we can't do. Her face become, beams brilliantly. She seems extremely happy. But is it okay? Shiki, you may have to face death again. I'm ready. And I think that's why I have these eyes to begin with. When I was a child, someone told me this. That if I have the power others do not, I should do things that others cannot. I think this is that kind of thing. Oh, I don't really know your circumstances, but that sounds good. Arakai is in an incredibly good mood, and being with her puts me in a good mood as well. But what do we do now? You want to search for more of the dead like before? Yeah, I think that's all we can do for now. The one before was the 12th, but so I don't think there's many more. The parent vampire will have to come out once they're all destroyed, so we have to hunt the remaining ones for now. Is that still okay, she asks? Anything's fine, I'm just with you. If you leave, then I'll follow. Well, shall we start again? No, that's good for tonight. Oh, shit. Well, shall we start again? Uh, no, that's good for tonight. 
They usually follow a fixed route, and the other dead will probably not be out tonight. Since they are fewer in number, I don't think he'll let them all come out at once. Oh, really? That doesn't mean this enemy will try to hide the. But doesn't this mean the enemy will try to hide the dead from you? Basically, but since this enemy is a vampire, he needs to steal the blood and energy of others. So even though he knows I'm searching for them, he has to send the dead out to get the minimal blood he needs. Then the minimal dead he sent out was that man from before, huh? So searching further to so searching further tonight would be useless. I think. Well, I don't mind. It is tedious, though. Yeah, hunting vampires is tedious work. We have to find the coffin of this enemy somewhere in the city. It won't be easy. Arkai lets go of my hand and jumps back softly. Arkai? Let's say goodbye for tonight. We'll meet tomorrow. With a dance-like step, she watches me as she gets further away. Tomorrow? Wait, where should we meet? Here's fine. The time? Yeah, around 10 o'clock should be fine. With a smile, she makes that promise. Good night, Shiki. I'll see you here tomorrow. And waving her hand, Arakai disappears. I get back to the mansion. It's about 1.30 in the morning. The mansion's completely dark. Oh, this can't be good. I put my hand on the mansion gate. The sturdy chain holds it closed. Damn it. I shouldn't cut this. I think a bit. Then I decide to climb over the gate. I'm exhausted. As I'm sneaking over the wall like a thief, I quietly make my way to the doorway. The gate was locked, but the door isn't. Must have been Hisui. I give a sigh of thanks. So as not to wake Akiha, Kohaku, or Hisui, I sneak my way through the mansion. Woo, Hisui always looking out, man. Letting out a breath, I lay down on my bed. I promise to Arukai. Maybe it's fate, but you've gotten yourself tangled up in trouble again, Tano Shiki. Could I help it? I just couldn't, I just can't leave her alone. Maybe I didn't want to leave her alone. Well, I do like Arukai, but is that love? I don't even know my own feelings. At any rate, looks like I'll be helping Arakai once again starting tomorrow. So for now, I shouldn't think of anything else but getting a good night's sleep. I can't sleep. <laughs> if I close my eyes, so many things come to mind. About Arakai. About this vampire lurking the streets. About the black-clothed senpai. I can't sleep. At times like this, reading is good. I know there was a book I was reading before. The first feeling was rather one of pity. Not anger, not despair. Just, I thought everything before my eyes was pitiful. Of course, the most pitiful thing is myself. Life which breaks down without limit. Daily life which fades without limit. Time which is forgotten without limit. Everyone only falls. And yet everyone still struggles desperately to continue existing. And when they judge that it is not possible, they continue to reproduce. Continuing to reproduce. In the end, even that dies. But there's no recompensation. Of course, it is not those who die who are not recom recompensated. We had no hope to begin with. What is not recom recompensated are the attempts. The noble wish. The yearning for eternity which everyone longs for yet cannot achieve. I have no interest whatsoever in the things that break down. If I could see the death and understand it, maybe I'll take a bit of interest. A repetition of nearly impossible to, a repetition nearly impossible to measure, yet this wish repeats itself. A thought to replace this almost comical cycle of wishes with one pure thing. There's no need to state the method. A wish becomes a result after it is granted. I live solely for that reason. It cannot be the term conviction. It's just the first word I happen to learn to hap I learn happened to be eternity. Oh. So you intend to get the eternity closest to you? Of course not. There are no there are only species that ate slower and die harder. I'm becoming one of I am becoming one of them only because his body has reached its limit. If I'm to go farther on, it will take time in this body. It's ironic that you, the one that goes after eternity, hurries with things. So you plan on leaving here tomorrow? I'll leave the burial agency to you. In the first place, 
There's only one empty seat for the priesthood. I used up all my father's inheritance getting this far, so it's about time I quit. Well, that's fine. So you're going to complete your magic theory. I have no intention of leaving here, and I can't live with you. Well, fortunately, I am a woman. Oh. I'll quickly bear a child and tell it all about you. Oh. What will you tell it, Narberek? Let's see. I'll tell it something like, After around a hundred years, another newcomer dead apostle will appear. It is pointless to take notice of him, so ignore him. No, you wouldn't need to wait a hundred years. Just like here, I will rise quickly to the top. His body will become the most superior vampire, so ten years will be enough. How foolish. Even if it is you, you will need to wait at least a hundred years if you start over from the dead. Their world's intensity is nowhere as nice as ours. Using direct, met using direct methods and you would be right. But if I become the strongest vampire from the very beginning, their world's rules would not apply to me. What do you mean by that? It is simple. As a priest of the church, you certainly know that the dead apostles' powers are affected by the true ancestors that sucked their blood. Therefore, the solution is very simple. If I wish to become the strongest dead apostle, this blood of mine, it must be sucked by the strongest of the true ancestors. So this dumb fuck really thinks that my goat Arukai would waste her effort sucking his blood. Fuck out of here, pussy. You ain't worth shit. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll read them all, tap into the next one. I'm happy to get back on Tsukihime, man. I was loving this game so much, for real. I had to calm down on it a bit so I could finish up Fate and then um play through play through all of episode I guess. But now that I finished all of that up, I'm glad to be back on it. Ooh, I was hoping I could finish it a little earlier, man, because I was planning on recording three shits today. I wanted to record this and then record Danganronpa, and then after that record Umineko, but hey, shit don't always work out, you feel me? So, peace out, I love y'all, type into the next one.